Good morning. Great to see all of you worshiping with us today. Uh, Pastor Adamson is still recovering from medical issues at home. And so we have a team effort this morning. Uh, I, I'm Eric. I'll be leading the liturgy. Um, Lynn Biar will be uh, leading our sermon. And uh, Clint Tagemeyer will be doing the readings for us. So thank you for your patience. Um, there is a change in the gospel reading. If you noticed in your bulletin, it is crossed out, and there is a gospel reading insert in your bulletin. So when we get to the gospel reading, please refer to the insert page and not what's actually printed in the normal bulletin. That change happened after the printing was already happened, so our, uh, our office staff put an insert for you. Uh, ask that you uh, please rise uh, for our opening hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. From the rising of the sun to its ending. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its ending. In the name of the Lord is to be praised. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Glory to God and The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the strength of all who trust in you, and without your aid we can do no good thing. Grant us the help of your grace that we may please you in both will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading this morning out of the Old Testament is the book of Amos, chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. Woe to those who are at ease in Zion and to those who feel secure on the mountain of Samaria, the notable men of the first of the nations to whom the house of Israel comes. Pass over to Kalna and see, and from there go to Hamath the Great. Then go down to the Gath of the Philistines. Are you better than these kingdoms? Or is their territory greater than your territory? O you who put far away the day of disaster and bring near the seat of violence, woe to those who lie in beds of ivory and stretch themselves out on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and like David invent for themselves instruments of music who drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first of those who go into exile, and the revelry of those who stretch themselves out shall pass away. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading this morning is 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he, will, he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Therefore, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. Deacons, likewise, must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to too much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience 
and let them also be tested first. Then let them serve as Dinkins if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives, likewise, must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, fearful, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. For those who serve as well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord.
Please speak with me these words from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When he breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will regain forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried, and in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in the like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. I ask the children to please come forward for the children's message from Mr. Mike. Thank you. 
doing so. You guys are still young enough to call my mom and dad. Right? Yes, no, it's not even mom and dad. I'm good on your own. That's good. That's good to say that. <laughs> but I don't know. But Mr. Mike, he needs a lot of work. I'm not very good at waking up, so I need an alarm to wake up. So you know what the problem is? Is I'll hear the alarm, and I'll look at it and go, you know what, I really want to go, I really want to wake up right now. So you know what I'll do? I'll hit the snooze button on my phone. Yeah, I'll wake up a little bit. And so, you know, 15 minutes go by, and sure enough, the next alarm goes off, and you know what I say? I don't really want to get up right now. I'm just going to sleep a little longer, so I'll hit the snooze button again. And so on, and so forth, until finally I realize, oh, I'm going to drag myself out of bed so I can do the winner.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Prior to today's early service, I had an interesting conversation with Clint and Eric. Clint was telling me about a YouTube video where the pastor of this church dressed up like a hobo or a homeless person and set up camp right by the front doors. And he filmed it. This parallels our gospel message for today. Eric exclaimed, it was undercover pastor. Think about that as we listen to today's gospel. You know, most of us today are used to working against deadlines, due dates to pay our bills, complete tax returns, turn in school assignments, or not to hit that snooze button so we can get to work on time. There are closing dates for entering competitions or buying tickets. And although there can be disappointments and disadvantages if we miss those deadlines, there's often some sort of second chance or a way around our misfortune. Even angry baseball or football fans who can't get tickets to the big game still have a chance to watch those games on TV. But there's one thing in life, though, that has a final deadline, after which there is no turning back. And that has to do with the gift of God's grace in Jesus Christ. Do we ignore it and live for ourselves, pursuing uh, worldly wealth and worldly possessions? Or do we live in the grace and mercy God showers down upon us? Jesus talks about that deadline in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. First, we are told about the enormous difference between the material wealth of these two people. There once was a rich man who dressed in the most expensive clothes and lived in great luxury. And there was also a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who used to be brought to the rich man's door, hoping to eat the bits of food that fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. Next, Jesus tells us about the enormous difference between the spiritual wealth of these two people. Lazarus was the one that was spiritually rich, and the rich man was the one who was spiritually poor. The evidence of that is what Jesus said about them when it came to the final deadline. Their roles were reversed at the point of death. We read further, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the feet of heaven, at the feast in heaven. The rich man died and was buried and in hell he was in great pain. He looked up and he saw Abraham far away with Lazarus at his side. The one who had enjoyed comfort and pleasure on earth was now in torment and pain because with all his earthly riches, he had neglected the greatest riches of all, the riches of God's grace. The one who had endured torment and pain on earth was now enjoying comfort and pleasure because in all his earthly poverty, he had found the greatest riches of all, his faith in God and in God's promises. Both men had reached the deadline where their eternal fate would be decided forever. Suddenly the rich man thought of four things he should have done while on this earth. First, he lifted his eyes up to heaven. He looked up and he saw Abraham far away 
with Lazarus at his side. He focused on the Father's house above and the comfort which believers receive there. He had had opportunity to do that during his earthly life. Like King David, who had said, one thing have I asked of the Lord, that which I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, for he will hide me in his shelter. Psalm chapter 27. The rich man could have done that instead of focusing on himself, his own wealth, his own enjoyment. But now it was too late. Second, the rich man prayed for God's mercy. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. He became aware of his real condition before God. He was not worthy to stand before God on his own. He was spiritually bankrupt, separated from God forever because of his sin. He needed God and his mercy. He could have lived in God's mercy and salvation beforehand if only he had seen his own condition and recognized God's mercy. Now, it was too late. Third, the rich man began to think of Lazarus. He called out, send Lazarus to dip his finger in some water and cool off my tongue because I'm in great pain in this fire. Lazarus had been in pain on earth, but the rich man only thought about himself. The scraps that Lazarus received were not given to him. They fell. Now the rich man became aware of his need for compassion because he was the one that needed it. Now he noticed Lazarus. But the gap that he had created between himself and others was as wide and unbridgeable as the gap between heaven and hell. Abraham reminds him that he once had an opportunity to bridge that gap. Now it was too late. Fourth, the rich man had a burning desire for evangelism. The rich man said, then I beg you, Father Abraham, and send Lazarus to my father's house where I have five brothers. Let him go and warn them so that they at least will not come to this place of pain. In his lifetime, he had the word of God, the warnings of Moses and the prophets and the words of eternal life to share with his brothers. But he did not do it. Now, it was too late. One of the greatest torments of hell will be that people there will suddenly have a burning desire to do all those things they could have done and should have done on earth, but they won't be able to do them. Christ's warning is that we have only one lifetime to get it right with God. Now we may be asking ourselves, but isn't God a God of second chances? Doesn't he want everyone in heaven and not to go to hell? That's most certainly true. And that's why he sent Jesus as our savior. In Christ, God has given us forgiveness that we don't deserve, heaven and not hell. He has provided us with a much better alternative to this life, and that is live than is lived to self and worldly pleasures and possessions. Through Christ, God has offered us a fresh opportunity to focus on his Father's house above. 
We know that Jesus' death has paved the way to the Father's house for us and that we can trust in him. And when we do, we never need to be worried because he assures his faithful people that he has already gone to prepare a place for you and for me. Through Christ, God has already bridged the gap that could have separated us from him eternally. His amazing grace has given us the cross of Jesus as a secure bridge across that gap. And Jesus' resurrection is the insurance of his eternal victory over death and hell for all believers. Through Christ, God has given us the power and motivation to show love and compassion to others. Jesus says in John 13, love one another as I have loved you. And in Matthew chapter 25, he says, as much as you have done it to the least of these, my brothers, you have done it to me. Jesus reminds us we are to serve each other in love, not ourselves and our own self-interests. Through Christ, God has given us the hope of having our families share in God's place of eternal happiness instead of the place of eternal pain. Someone has risen, Jesus has risen from the dead and comes to us to help us turn away from our sins. We have the word of God, the word of Moses and the prophets, as well as the words of Christ and his apostles to share God's good news with our family and friends. The fact is that for us, God is providing the riches of his grace a second chance right now. What are the priorities in our lives at this moment? What sort of riches are we really interested in? Material or spiritual? Are there some things that we ought to look at changing now before it's too late for our family and our friends and ourselves? When it comes to the deadline, when our life is over, when we stand before God in judgment, there will be no more second chances. God has given us our second chance in Jesus right here, right now. And that is the good news for today. Let us not forget to put our trust in him alone. And all God's people say, Amen. Now may the peace that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise to sing.
Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your hands we commend all those in need, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please speak with me Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.
Good morning. morning. It's great to see all of you worshiping with us today. Uh, This Sunday is Church Extension Fund Sunday or CEF Sunday. And you have a insert in your bulletin that describes uh, what CEF is and what it does for our church and the whole body of the LCMS. And Donna Hicks will be available uh, in the narthex after this service uh, to talk to you about that. Um, The CD interest rates are Uh, Although your credit card interest rates are going up, that means the CD interest rates are going up, and that's the same for CEF. So uh, if you're looking for a place to invest your money, uh, talk to Donna. It helps not only you, but uh, the entire church body. Uh, This morning we had uh, the Salvation Cafe with uh, kolaches uh, and juice and coffee. So if you missed that, please join us next Sunday. Uh, We had Pastor Adamson's class on the study of James. And uh, Lynn also started a new Bible study on the great sending God's heart for the world beating through you. So please join us for those next Sunday if you you miss them. Uh, This Thursday, Alan Rouse will be teaching a Bible study uh, on the 29th. Uh, And Luther Fest is on Saturday, uh, October 8th. That's in two weeks from 4 to 7 p.m. We still have sign-up sheets available uh, in the narthex. Uh, You can uh, donate items such as baked goods, or you can also volunteer your time, which uh, would be greatly appreciated. So see those sign-up sheets in the narthex if you can help. And finally, um, I'd like to uh, thank all those who spent their time yesterday decorating uh, the narthex uh, and fellowship hall for fall. I know it doesn't feel like fall when it's 95 degrees outside, but it it is fall. Trust me. And those are all the announcements we have today, uh, and uh, Clint will usher you out. Have a great Sunday.